In this video, I'll share the pros and cons of using extruded aluminum versus wood for the construction of a camper van. I'll discuss the weight, strength, the cost, the DIY friendliness, and the tools needed for each type of construction. And at the end of this video, I'll share my top tips that will save you a ton of time and money if you decide to use extruded aluminum. So if you're doing a DIY camper van conversion, or you're choosing a layout by a professional builder, this video is for you. So let's get into it. So let's talk about construction of cabinetry in a van. So you can see here, I've got a cabinet. This is a bench. Uh, this is where the toilet's gonna go. You can see it's got these locking uh, sliders. These are 500 pound sliders. And uh, by the way, I'll link to everything that I talk about in the description um, where we get these sliders and all the other things that we're using. Now there are certain parts of the van that we use the extruded aluminum and there are others where we just use traditional wood construction. And I'm gonna talk about the use cases where we feel like the extruded aluminum is better and where just using simple cabinet construction is better. You can see behind me a van and the entire interior that you see there is extruded aluminum. The mechanical box is in the back, on the right is the electrical, on the left is the plumbing, and then the galley up front, and then the other ca upper cabinets, all of those are extruded aluminum. And I'll talk towards the end of this video why we use the extruded aluminum for certain things and use just traditional wood cabinet construction for other parts. So I get a lot of questions about extruded aluminum and there's kind of a lot of controversy about different aspects of, of construction with wood versus extruded aluminum. And I'll talk about some of those differences, the pros and cons of each, and kind of what we've learned building out 18 camper vans using both extruded aluminum and wood construction. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the weight. There's a lot of controversy about which is lighter or heavier extruded aluminum versus wood. So it really depends on the situation. There are certain times where the extruded aluminum construction is gonna be a lot lighter, and there are other times where it's gonna be heavier. Now let's take this bench, for example. So this bench is gonna be located in the slider. You're gonna see the end of it, the back of it, the side of it, and then the, that end is gonna be bolted into the um, mechanical box, the electrical mechanical box. So this one is going to need to have three quarter inch panels on all sides as well as on the top. This is going to be a solid top and then over here will be a lift up top for storage underneath the bench. So in a case like this, the 80-20 construction is going to be heavier. And the reason for that is you've got to build the entire structure out of the 80-20. You'll hear me say several times in this video, 80-20. 80-20 is sort of like calling tissue paper Kleenex. It's kind of has become a generic term. And even though there are a lot of manufacturers of extruded aluminum bars and parts, 80-20 um, is probably the most commonly known. And so a lot of people just call it 80-20. We don't typically buy our materials from 80-20. We use a different company and I'll mention those at the end and we save between 30 and 50% off of what you would pay for the 8020 name brand. And it's every bit as good. And in fact, I like working with a company even better. Uh, so I'll talk about that a little bit later. So if I was to build this bench out of extruded aluminum, which we have done on a lot of vans in the past, uh, I would have to build the entire structure. Then I would have to put panels on every side. I have to put panels on the front, the back, that end, I'd have the drawer face here, I'd have this panel here, I'd have the top. So it would have all of the wood that this one has, plus it would have all of the extruded aluminum. And so therefore it would be a lot more expensive and it would also weigh a lot more than just doing the wood on its own. Now, let's look at this galley. Now this is a little bit different situation. And the reason is that the only part of this you're gonna see is the end and the front, okay? You're not gonna see the, the back, you're, you're not gonna see the, this end over here. And so in this case, the extruded aluminum is actually gonna be a lot lighter. And I haven't actually weighed it, but I can tell you this. We built, um, I think I built our, my first three or four um, galleys out of wood. And then ever since then, I've built them out of extruded aluminum. So I think I built 
I've built like 15 using extruded aluminum and three using wood. So when we do it with wood construction, we build the entire carcass, so which would be everything except the counter and all the bases. Uh, right here is going to be the refrigerator. This will be five drawers. Uh, this will be a, a blank drawer. And then this will be the, a, a cabinet door to open underneath the sink. So we build the carcass that has everything except all of those um, panels in the front. And I can tell you to lift those carcasses out, out of wood, takes two people and they're really heavy. But with these extruded aluminum carcasses, I can lift up the whole thing, move it in and out of the van, no problem. So the only additional piece I'm gonna have to add is that end panel. So with the carcass, which would be this right here versus the wood cabinet, which would be everything except for the, all the faces. If I compare those apples to apples, the wood version definitely weighs a lot more. Then when we're finishing up the galley, we're gonna have the countertop and all the faces, which is the same whether you're using wood or aluminum. So really when you compare the wood construction with the extruded aluminum, the things that are the same are all of the drawer boxes, all of the faces and the countertop. I wanted to jump in really quick and share something with you that Lisa and I are passionate about. We love cooking and creating in the kitchen, whether we're at home or cooking in a tiny van kitchen. And one of our favorite hacks is using Thrive freeze-dried foods. Why freeze-dried? Because it's lightweight, requires no refrigerator, and lasts for up to 25 years. With fruits, veggies, meats, and dairy products, Thrive's got you covered. Whether you want healthy ingredients for quick and easy meals, shelf-stable meals for when you are on the road, or you want to be more prepared in case of emergencies, Thrive could be your answer. Check out the link below for more info. And now back to the video. This van has white oak interior. So here's the white oak. Uh, this will be the drawer facer right here. Another van we're working on right now is gonna have all bamboo interior. So this is uh, bamboo. And uh, here's the same drawer face. We make all of our galleys exactly the same specs so that we can make all of the drawer faces. We have all of them already measured out. We know exactly how big they need to be. And so that's gonna go there. So the next thing about uh, the extruded aluminum versus wood is what I call the breathability. So with wood construction, in order to have everything rigid and structurally sound, you need to have um, you know, end panels. Usually you'll have dividers. You'll usually have a back. Uh, you'll usually have a bottom in it. Now there are ways you can do it to save some weight. You can use uh, just like three or four inch wide pieces to attach these things to make them a little bit stronger. But um, you're definitely gonna have more pieces. And what I love about the 8020 is that you can let it breathe. So for example, the back of the fridge is gonna be open. And so that compressor as it heats up is gonna be able to pull fresh air in and circulate it around. Uh, we don't put anything behind the drawers because you know, you're not gonna see behind those. And then um, underneath the sink, we do put a piece of um, board against the back wall. So same goes for our upper cabinets. You can see here that we have the entire back and top of this open and then we'll just have a piece of ABS that sits inside of here to cover it. You can see these are ABS dividers right here. And then there'll be a piece of ABS, kind of like what you would see on the inside of a, of a airplane in those upper cabinets where it just comes around and covers all this, but you can pop it in and out if you need to have, get access to any, any of this wiring. Another area where the extruded aluminum really shines is in the strength. So what we do is we, attach everything. So we're attaching the cabinetry to the walls and to the floor. Then we're attaching all of the, the different components together. So our galley is attached to our plumbing box. And then you can see this bar going across. We're going to have four of those bars and those are the bed rails that the bed platform sits on. But those bars will be bolted into the mechanical boxes which just ties everything together. So all of these extruded aluminum pieces on the lower section of the van are all attached together and bolted to the floor and to the walls. And we just feel like that's so much stronger than just having wood construction. So the whole interior construction is kind of like one big exoskeleton. And then we just add panels to cover the areas that you're gonna see and we leave the rest open. So you can see here, we've got these panels on these. 
Uh, this one is, we just cut it yesterday. We just cut this one yesterday. And so if I just pull this away, you can see the whole thing is there. And this makes accessibility really easy because we're just gonna be screwing this piece in directly into the 8020 or extruded aluminum with black screws like you can see right here. So they'll give a really clean finished look. But then if you need to access, you can just undo those screws, pull away the whole piece and you've got access to everything. Now, if you haven't figured out already, we're pretty big on the extruded aluminum construction. Uh, although there are certain cases where we do like to use the wood construction. However, there are some pitfalls with the extruded aluminum. And this is something that we hear people bring up a lot of times to us when we talk about doing the extruded aluminum construction is what if the bolts and screws come loose? So you can see here, I have a short cutoff of a extruded aluminum bar. And by the way, I do get a lot of questions about whether we use the 10 series or the 15 series. This is 10 series, and this is what we use for pretty much everything. Uh, the only place where we use the 15 series is for the bed rails, uh, because they're supporting the weight of the bed. And then also if we're doing like a, a rack for the roof or solar panels, then we'll use the 15 series. For all of the cabinet construction, we use 10 series. We feel like it's plenty strong and rigid enough, uh, especially when you use the proper connectors, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes. And this is a corner bracket. Uh, corner bracket, the little screw, and the T-nut. So the T-nut basically just slides into the slot. And then when you tighten it down properly, it's gonna really lock in. When a customer, even after a year or two, brings a van back into the shop, um, when we go to loosen it, you feel that pop. So if, if I have it there and then I'll see if, I'll hold it next close to my microphone so you can kind of hear that. You hear that kind of pop? So that's what happens. Um, it kind of locks in and almost acts like a lock washer um, because if you were to look at a cross section of this, these walls just are angled in ever so slightly so that when you tighten this, it kind of acts as a spring, kind of like a lock washer or a spring washer would where it locks it in. However, I will say that it is very, very important to use Loctite on every single screw. That's just an added protection, just with all the vibration you're gonna have in a van, it's really important to use the Loctite and make sure that you really tighten all of these very securely. And that's that tends to create that spring effect and lock the screw in. The other thing that's important is to have the right tools. Um, this is a, a wrench that we use a lot. It's extended with a ball Allen on the on one end so that you can put it in that and be at different angles because you can't always get directly in perpendicular to the screw. So this will allow you to come in at a little bit of an angle and tighten it. And then once you get it in there snug, then you can turn it over and use this end and put it in and really crank it down. Now, if you use the traditional Allen key, just kind of the L-shaped Allen key, it's really difficult to get them in tight enough to really lock them in. Now, this is a wrench that we really like. This is made by a German company called Wera, or probably Vera uh, in German. I'm probably butchering that. But anyway, it has different attachments. Um, this is the 530 seconds Allen, which is what you use for the 10 series extruded aluminum. Um, and it's a small wrench, but it's really nice because it pivots um, at different angles. So I can set it at this angle, this angle, you know, this way. And uh, so we'll use that sometimes when it's difficult to get into places, be able to tighten it up this way and then turn it this way and really crank it at the end. So what I like to do is once I got everything together and know that I have it exactly where I want it, then I'll come around with this wrench and really crank them in. Make sure they're really set well and they're not gonna come apart. We do recommend that if you construct your interior out of extruded aluminum, that about once a year you go through and check the screws and just give them a little bit of a crank. What you're usually gonna find is that they're all rock solid, but it's just a nice little safety precaution. If you build a van with us, we do offer an annual tighten down where you can bring the van into us annually for the life of the van and we will go through and just check everything and tighten it. Now, another thing that I really like about extruded aluminum is it's easy to change dimensions on the fly if you need to. 
we've had situations where we build something out for a client and then they decide, oh, you know what, we want to add something or we want to move this over. We want our drawers a little bit wider or we want to use a different sink and it needs to be wider or narrower. And so what you can do is all you've got to do is just loosen up some bars and you can move things around. Uh, and so it's really nice that way. We've had many times where we needed to make adjustments to the cabinetry. And if we had done it out of wood, we would have had to remake the whole thing. Where with the extruded aluminum, you just loosen things up, move the bars around, retighten them, you're good to go. So what about the cost difference? The extruded aluminum is definitely more expensive than doing the construction all out of wood. You're still gonna have to buy a lot of wood, this whole face and then the front, we're gonna have to cover all of those faces with the same material that we would be using uh, if we were building it entirely out of wood. So whether that be uh, you know, walnut, white oak, bamboo, or just a um, cabinet grade plywood that we paint, you're gonna be using the same materials. You're not gonna to have to buy as much of those with the extruded aluminum because you're only gonna put those on the sides that are exposed, but you still, you're probably gonna to have to buy about half the wood. So depending on the wood, there's a lot of variety in the, the cost of wood. So typically on a van like this, we're gonna spend about um, 500 to $1,000 on the wood, depending on the grade of the wood, whether it's like a hardwood, like a walnut, or a white oak or a bamboo, or if it's just a, a paint grade uh, plywood, uh, it's gonna be a little bit less. If we were doing it entirely out of wood, we'd spend about double that. So maybe $1,000 to $2,000 on the wood. Now, when we're doing the extruded aluminum, it costs us about $1,500 to $2,000 for all of the extruded aluminum, all of the hardware, to do our galley, our mechanical boxes, and our uppers. And we're not getting any deals. We're, we're paying the same price that you would, um, but we do feel like with the company that we buy from, it's the best price out there, and I will link to them in the description. So you're gonna spend that, let's just say, let's just call it $2,000 on all of the extruded aluminum and about 500 on all of the wood, so you're 2,500 into it, where if you were doing the entire thing out of just wood, you're probably gonna spend maybe half to two thirds of that. So maybe around a thousand to $1,500 for all of the wood if you're just doing the cabinetry. But we feel like the benefits of the strength, the accessibility, the adjustability are just well worth the cost. So what about the DIY friendliness or difficulty? So if you're going with the wood, you're gonna need some tools. You're probably gonna need a table saw. You're probably gonna need a pocket hole um, jig. Uh, you're going to need um, just some, some pretty typical uh, power tools that you're going to have anyway if you're doing a van. Now, a lot of those same tools will be necessary if you're doing your construction out of extruded aluminum because you're still going to be dealing with the wood. You're going to need a way to cut down the wood, um, whether it's a table saw or a track saw. Uh, you're not going to need the joining. Like for example, uh, when we do wood construction, we use most, most of the time a domino joiner. Uh, you could use a biscuit joiner, you could use a pocket hole jig. There are different ways to uh, connect the different pieces. You're gonna need uh, to be able to sand it. You're gonna be painting or finishing uh, with a stain or like we use Rubio Monocoat most of the time. You're gonna be using all those same things if you're do, doing the construction out of extruded aluminum but there will be a few extra tools that you need. They're not a lot of money, um, but there are some things you're gonna need. One is a way to cut the aluminum. You can order the aluminum from our supplier pre-cut, but I'm gonna tell you that's difficult to get all of your measurements and specs exactly right so that you don't have to make any cuts yourself. We find that it's just a lot easier for us just to buy the bars in lengths and uh, then cut it down ourselves. We end up with very little waste. Most of our cutoffs are less than six inches and if they're more than six inches we save them and we're usually use, able to use them somewhere down the road. We've tried different ways of cutting and we found that the best one for us is using this blade. This is a blade specifically made for aluminum, aluminum and plastic and uh, we have a separate miter saw that we just keep this blade on but if you have a miter saw you can get this in a 10 inch or a 12 inch blade. Uh, it's not very expensive. I think it's about 30 or 35 dollars and uh, it'll cut a lot. We can do about three vans with one blade and then we'll change it out. 
but it cuts great. You don't really need any lubrication like WD-40 or oil when you cut. You can just cut with this blade. It does a great job. You can also purchase a chop saw and you can get those at Harbor Freight or on Amazon for a couple hundred dollars. Um, but if you already have a miter saw, then just getting this blade is really the way to go. And like I mentioned earlier, you're gonna need some wrenches. So this is an awesome one, and I will link to this in the description. Uh, for the 10 series, it's a 532nd is the size. So this one's nice. Uh, this is one I really highly recommend, and I'll link to this in the description. Because uh, of the different angles you can get at, uh, and really put some torque on it to crank it down when you're ready. And then you're definitely gonna wanna have some Loctite. So we like the sticks. Um, they're just a lot easier to work with than the liquid. We use blue Loctite for most things. Um, and the reason is the blue uh, will lock it in place, but you can loosen it just by hand. The red, you're gonna need a, um, typically to heat it up in order to release the screw. Uh, so we use these on things that are totally permanent, especially on the exterior. Um, but for the interior, we'll usually use the blue. And I'll link to both of these in the description. But the nice thing about the sticks is we'll just get out a pile of, of screws and just go in and put a little bit on every single screw. And that material will last for days or weeks. You don't have to reapply it. And so you can just have all of them already pre um, lock tight it up so as you assemble things you don't have to do it on every single piece which saves a lot of time. Now let's talk about the different types of hardware that you use for connecting the extruded aluminum together. So like I said this one is just a standard corner bracket so you use that one a lot just for connecting two pieces so if I had a bar here and another bar here I could screw those together. Um, also you know in the corner same thing I could have a bar coming down here and just attach those. The next thing we use um, in strategic locations is this, what's called a gusseted corner bracket. And these are nice to just add a little bit of extra strength. So it's got two holes on each side. So you can have a little bit more um, connection. And then also because of that triangle shape and because it's a little bit bigger, it's just gonna give a little bit more rigidity to the piece and also help keep it square. There's also a couple of other, other type of connectors. They're just a flat plate. They also have anchor brackets. There's hidden corner brackets of other kinds. And I've done a whole video on how we do our upper cabinets out of extruded aluminum. And with those, we use a lot of different types of connectors because of where we're gonna be putting panels and attaching things. So if you wanna see a little bit more detail about the different types of connectors, then check out that video. I'll link to it in the description. So what about the DIY friendliness of both? I would say there is a little bit of a learning curve with the extruded aluminum, but it's pretty hard to mess it up. So if you make a mistake, you can either just adjust things and move them over. You might have to recut a piece, but typically, even if you have to do that, the bad piece you're gonna be able to use for something else. So it's very easy to reuse the parts, pull things off, add things back on. And so while it does take a little bit of time to um, learn how to do out of the 8020, I feel like it's actually a simpler construction. Now, there are a few tips that I've learned after from building a lot of different uh, extruded aluminum uh, cabinetry. And that is number one, to sketch it out first. Even if you're not using some kind of a program like SketchUp or Fusion 360, which we don't do. Um, we just hand sketch them. Um, it's just a lot easier. I just have a um, notebook with, that has grid lines and I just will just sketch things out, get all the dimensions and uh, build it from that. And then from that, you can make a cut list. You could say, you know, if these are 24 inches, I need one, two, three, four of those. And if my uprights are 12 inches, I need one, two, three, four of those. And I just make a list of all the pieces I'm gonna cut and I cut everything uh, for that. So another thing that takes a little bit of planning and uh, a bit of a learning curve is where you're gonna need T-nuts because there we you have what are called captive channels. So this is the channel in the extruded aluminum. You can see I put a bracket on each end. So this uh, groove right here or slot is captive. This one is not captive. So if I need to put a T-nut in here, I can just slide it in and use it, right? But in this one, 
I have no way of getting it in there. So if I figure out down the road that this piece is gonna be here and I'm gonna need a bar, an upright right here, I have no way to get a T-nut to be able to attach a bracket in there. So there's a couple of things you can do is um, you can use these what are called roll-in T-nuts and they're just a little bit different shape. The back of them is a little bit um, kind of beveled so you can actually put them into a captive slot and get them in there, okay? So just like that. So these are more expensive for the captive ones and I feel like it's a little bit like cheating. And so I will not use these unless I'm at the very end. I've got everything installed and I'm putting it together and I realize, oh, you know what? I need a corner bracket right here so that I can attach my countertop to it or an end panel or something like that. In those cases, I will use the rolling T-nut. Everything else up until then, I will pull things apart and slide in a regular T-nut. So if I had a bar here, I could just loosen the set, pull it apart, slide a T-nut in there and put that bar back together. But I will say that the first few times that you're building stuff out of extruded aluminum, you're gonna end up with a lot of place where you have these captive slots and can't get something in, in there. So typically for a build, I'll order about a 25 of the rolling T-nuts um, just for those situations where I'm gonna need to drop them in um, last minute. Now I mentioned the company where we buy our extruded aluminum. It's not 8020, it's another company. What I love about this company is their prices are about 30 to 50% less depending on what you're buying, whether it's bars or hardware, screws, things like that. So I highly recommend this company. And again, I'll link to them in the description. So really you can't go wrong either way. There's nothing wrong with building a van out of wood construction. Uh, we just feel like it's just a little bit better kind of there's good, better, best, that we feel like the extruded aluminum is the best, but the wood is, is a good way to construct it as well. Now, the first time that I built a van using the extruded aluminum, it was actually my second van, and I planned to do my upper cabinets as well out of extruded aluminum, but once I got to it, I just couldn't figure it out. It was very confusing to me because of the angles, the top of the van angles in and the ceiling angles in, and I just really couldn't figure out how to make that work using the extruded aluminum, so I did that out of wood. Then I kind of put my mind to it and figured out a good way to build them out of the extruded aluminum, and now I absolutely love it. I would never go back to the wood construction. I've done a whole video on exactly how we do those upper cabinets using extruded aluminum, so if you wanna check that video out, you can click or tap the screen. We've also got tons of other videos on the channel about van conversions, van product reviews, van life, so be sure to check those out. And please consider subscribing and be sure to smash that like button. And I'll see you in the next video. Jeff with Thrive Vans, thrive on. See ya. So like I said, this one uh, that you would 